I am talking with Carl Riley. Carl is Head of Design and Innovation with Cora Systems. And our very topical topic today is how five big waves of change will alter project management. Hello, Carl, you're very welcome. And thank you for talking with us on Project Management Paradise. Thank you, my pleasure. Carl, we know you've got, well, I know, uh, you've got huge um, background in the project management industry across many uh, verticals, construction, the public sector, aviation, rail. Tell us a little about how you got into project management and uh, what were common themes across all of the verticals you worked in? So how I got into it, it was 30 odd years ago. It was by accident. Um, I was going to read um, civil engineering at university got into construction management uh, as a way of funding some of that and stayed. Uh, so a few years in construction management, site management, contract management, delivering capital projects um, in and around London, you know, multi-million pound developments. And then went from there to the client side because I, I could see rather than just delivering somebody else's thoughts and problems, I could then be driving what the design and what the program was going to look like. So that then became working for another consultancy um, around helping people deliver their, their chosen capital projects. So it, it was still delivery for somebody else. And using that, I, I, you know, I've worked on hospitals, I've worked on retail and leisure, uh, office refurbs, office new build, retail parks, all sorts. Um, so got quite an exposure to different types of clients and what was driving their business. So gradually work that through to rather than just building a building for somebody, why do you need a building? And then what's your business need for building a building? And that then sort of morphed into more of the business management, management consulting side of things. Jumped ship from that company and joined PwC, completely different way of looking at project management and program delivery. Um, and then was involved in delivering central government projects, public sector projects, uh, much more of a, a, a stratospheric, we use the word stratosphere or strategic way too often, but they were more strategic projects, programs for quite major clients. Uh, and there was aviation, there's rail, there's government, there's local authority, uh, different public sector organisations, lots of health work. And the core through all of those is the, the science and the art of delivering projects. And for me, it's all about people. It's, you know, people are the folk who are delivering programmes and project work. Our clients are all people. The people on the receiving end of what we deliver are all people. So for me, it's all about the people. So things like stakeholder engagement, making sure we've got stakeholders engaged right the way through and communicating with them becomes fundamental to successful delivery for me. And we're not just looking at what our project or our program is delivering, what are the outputs, but also what are the outcomes? What's the business change that, are, that is delivered by us doing what we're doing? So it's, it goes from just doing stuff to making sure we're doing the right thing and engaging with the people that matter all the way through the program. So uh, within the project management world, um, you know, we have a job to do. We manage all our resources to do, deliver that job, large or small, uh, in whatever vertical it may be. Um, and for many years, um, work has continued on uh, with an odd blow here and an odd blow there. But we've quite a lot of blows raining down um, on the world right now at this moment in time. Um, so we, we call them Brexit within the European and indeed the international political stage, climate change, the environmental impact for the whole world, COVID-19 and another uh, pandemic impact, uh, recession, which will be kind of, um, I suppose, there'll be some kind of domino effect um, as recessions um, permeate throughout the, the financial world. And also, we've just got uh, a technology technology change like the like of we've never seen before with the rapidity it's been delivered with. Tell us how these five waves can um, or will affect the PPM industry. So I don't think we can take each of them completely independently. Then It's like standing on a beach and the waves are crashing in. Um, it's this constant pressure of, of these different areas. Um, so in terms of project management, 
sort of looking broadly to start with, um, as we've seen in the last 18 months, uh, a firm will come up with a strategy and this is the programme or the project we're going to deliver and we're expecting these outcomes to be delivered at the end of it. And then an external factor has just come and hit us and knocked us completely off course. And it's a multitude of these things crashing in at different times and different rhythms that mean project managers have to be really responsive to change. Um, so if we just take COVID, nobody would have believed 18 months ago how the workplace would have changed so massively. So if you're looking at people delivering capital projects, delivering uh, office space or, tran or transport infrastructure, um, they would have been planning around the old world of how we were working and delivering. Suddenly, our plans are going to change. Revenue forecasts, um, all the monetary drivers are now completely different to where they were when the project would have started. So as a project manager, we need to have data at our fingertips um, so that we can be I hesitate to use the word agile, but that we can be fleet of foot in responding to those changes and we can use data to enable decision making. So we, the project managers, aren't driving the outcome of the project for the or the firm. We're helping them deliver it. But the C-suite, the execs, the project sponsors will be determining what needs to be delivered, what, what the outcomes must be. So we need to provide data around all of the factors of the project success, the value of what's being delivered to enable those leaders to make the right decisions. So we are not just about project delivery. We are now the advisors to those decision makers based on what we're doing. Um, so when it comes to things like you know, basic stuff, a rag status of a project, what's the risk of us hitting or missing our deadlines? Um, and what's the consequence of those deadlines being missed? We need good, solid data around that. Um, so when we do the traditional thing, you know, we do the status report and it goes green, 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 flashing red. Should never, ever happen. So we should be looking at the indicators. We should be having suitable key performance indicators, just tracking data so we can see the trend and we can take corrective action before it becomes a flashing red issue. Um, the data is all there. We just need to be better at harvesting and using it. So you mentioned a little earlier on um, that your big interest is in people and yep. engaging with people. And that's a common thread we find across uh, project management paradises, engagement and communications with people. And those um, flags that you have mentioned, mentioned just a moment ago, how do you how do you to find that value with different users when I might be an absolute alarmist and everything is the sky is going to fall down, whereas my uh, colleague in, on the next desk might just be so laconic and say, you know, it's OK, we'll get over it. <laughs> so how um, do you instill the importance of those indicators there? So um, it's it, it's as the project manager or program manager or whoever's in control of that area of work is talking to those individuals to gather data. You're looking backwards at what you've been told before and what's happened and what's been delivered. So you've got good case history on how things are coming forward. Um, so you can put your judgment layer over the top. But then it's, it's looking at the qualitative information you're being told. Um, to, the, to the person that's going, yeah, it's all right, it'll be fine on the day. But this is like this is like this is like this is like that's not quite right and this is wrong you can make a good judgment of all of that because you can challenge them back and go so so what means it's going to be all right and is that having enough knowledge as a project manager to drill down into a, a work stream or an area of the program to say and so what and if you can't understand the answer to the so what question you need to get up to speed and, and be able to answer that question. Um, so it's not being the guru on every single aspect of the program, but it's knowing how all the bits fit together. So when you're being told something, you can question and challenge it. And you can do that based on, on data. You also need to be able to challenge them and go, so why are you saying that? How can we turn it around? How can we make it better? So what's the real status? What's the real, real, uh, the real state of play? And it's coming down to measuring things by a set of values. If um, the person that's panicking is an absolute perfectionist and wants it absolutely 100% right, very laudable, um, is 80% going to get us over the line? Is that good enough? So when is good enough? 
good enough um and when is good enough just a bit slapdash happy um and you've and it's a judgment call and it's all down to knowing what the values are of the client organization what do they really value you know if it's a retailer and there's massive publicity around a product launch or a store opening or something like that the date is absolutely sacrosanct yeah. um so it's understand what the value drivers are for every client what you know we're going to deliver some outputs hopefully they'll deliver outcomes where's the value and how is value and to bring that carl then right back up to top level again and you know when you speak about portfolio and uh, the portfolios that organizations will have how can organizations respond to these changes and these markers and this information to prioritize the projects that they will proceed with the ones they may put on hold uh, or the ones that they will defer to a, a later period in time perhaps so for me a value there's a value ecosystem within every organization the, 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 the business as usual and there's change project projects and I use change in the broadest spectrum of, uh, of what it could possibly be um, but they're all going to deliver value it's that word again and that could be monetary return it could be increasing profit it could be a stable employment for their staff so it's understanding what an organization values and how they measure it and then if you scan down the project which of those are delivering against proper value so pure portfolio management i've gone in and reviewed portfolios in the past and you get 10 different projects each saying they're going to increase profitability by 10 percent and customer retention by 10 percent and whatever else so when you look at the benefits statements and you're looking at benefits realization um, as a portfolio view which of those projects are really contributing to the benefit they stated, or are they codependent? So as a portfolio lead, we need to understand the interdependencies and we need to understand the codependencies to achieve value. So if we come back from where is the value coming from, which projects are then gonna help us deliver that value? Um, and then if we've got some projects that aren't delivering that value, they're the ones we should be really critiquing and going either stop or pause, or understand what's driving them because all organizations to an extent will have some vanity projects you know a great leader has said we must do this or a politician has said we must do this and a company has to respond even though it may not be the biggest biggest buck for the bang in terms of value delivered but there is an alternative driver to what those things are so we then end up with a nice hierarchy of decision making criteria value by whatever metric and you know other needs it could be um you know somebody is really committed to achieving their their social agenda it could be we've got to meet a political aim we've got to meet uh some uh I don't know, legal requirements it doesn't deliver value but we have to do it so if you understand those we can then judge all the projects against them and then determine what what delivers what doesn't ultimately we shouldn't be afraid to stop projects just because we started doesn't mean we have to finish. So that those kind of uh, vanity projects nearly are the it's, it's the sixth wave. <laughs> well, <it's laughs> take a project out. I mean, if we look at something like climate change, it might be within there because people are greening their business. It could be a greenwash. They may not be actually doing something at the heart of their project. I hope they are, um, but it needs to be done because public perception on all of these things it can change a company's uh, bottom line so very quickly. So if we just take climate change, you know, McDonald's doing away with plastic straws, there's a big hoo-ha about it, you know, last year, year before. Did it really change things? But public perception, it changed massively. So it needed to be done. Uh, and it's those sorts of projects that come through. So th those um, responses to change as well, um, and, and you're absolutely right, some are for the press and some are for the people and some are for the project. Um, who can be the um, champion of change within an organization at, at that kind of portfolio level? Or who should be? So who should be and who can be? Very different. Who should be? Uh, it should be somebody uh, either part of the C-suite or a direct route to the C-suite. So the most senior person we can reasonably expect to be part of what we're doing. Um, it depends on the size of the organization, obviously. Mm. The more senior, the better, because you want them to be closer to the strategy the portfolio should be delivering against the firm's strategy 
So it should be you know, fairly high level. People do talk about having an R&D portfolio. So it's a slice of the organization. They have a portfolio of projects. And that's good, but then it's going to be head of R&D that's going to be driving it. Um, but they will then fit into a portfolio of what the overall organization is doing. So getting the right voice at the table and having an, us as the project manager sitting at that table, although in this case we would be the portfolio manager, having a seat at the table to be part of those discussions, we've got to be there. But who can influence the portfolio? All stakeholders that, um, that either can impact what we do or be impacted by what we do at, you know, at the right level. Um, so if you take something like a rollout of technology, I mean, broadband, a really easy example. Um, you know, government ministers are interested in what's happening with broadband rollout to rural areas. So we need to listen to what they say, but they're not in the company driving change. So it's, it's, under, it's, it's stakeholder analysis, understanding the importance of the voice you're hearing and listen to those voices and then take the appropriate action. Yeah, and uh, make the appropriate application in the delivery, I guess, of, of our portfolio to Absolutely. the company and the people, because there's always some social responsibility as well, I guess, uh, yeah. from organisations to, to manage their projects in such a way that they don't impact everything for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Carl, thank you very much. There was a really insightful little visit into change, the ways of change and how we manage it at a kind of high level from yeah. the top down, really. Um, and we look forward to chatting with you again. Uh, we look, look forward to it. Thanks very much.